Hello and welcome to another episode of our podcast, Power On. My name is Christian Scheider and I will be your host today. The global energy transition is in full swing, driven by renewable energy expansion, grid investments and ambitious targets like tripling renewable capacity by 2030. At the same time, the transformer industry is navigating through unexpected challenges from supply chain constraints to workforce shortage while trying to meet the surging demand. Today, we are joined by Christina Ipfrikhofer, expert for market intelligence, who is going to share her insights into these dynamics and the future of the transformer industry. Hi. Also, hello from my side. How would you describe the current state of the energy transition and what trends are shaping the market right now? Yeah, in my opinion, the energy transition at the moment is literally ongoing. Of course, when we look back to 2015, we had the Climate Paris Conference, um, where the global community decided to lower uh, the global warming well below the two degrees level. But in my opinion, it often was just like a political strategy or more like a plan, but nothing really happened. And at the moment, we see that countries are really doing something. They really build up renewables like solar PV and onshore offshore wind parks. And in my opinion, this is mainly caused by looking back to 2022, where the Russian-Ukrainian crisis happened. So I think a lot of countries then noticed that it's better to be independent from other countries regarding energy and power, and then decided that they need to do something. So this is one factor, I think, which brought a lot of countries to do something and to decarbonize then the power sector. And I think the second factor is we saw in by end of 2023 in Dubai at the COP28, uh, 130 countries, this is what you also said in the beginning, decided to triple renewables by 2030. This is only five years to go. So now a lot of countries then notice, okay, I should definitely start now to do something. With the grid investments accelerating globally, what are the most notable developments you are seeing, both in established markets like the European Union and in emerging economies? At the moment, I think a lot of countries, no matter which country at the moment, for now, uh, are really focusing on building up renewable energy, which is infinite and available everywhere, like uh, solar PV and onshore offshore wind. So this is definitely something where each country has its focus on. But of course, we also see regional differences. But I think I will talk about this later because uh, in general, when uh, so many renewable power is coming up now, we have the effect that the grid is more under challenge now than before because generation now fluctuates more than in the past. And also the generation centers move away from consumer centers. And this is definitely a stress for the grid. And now all countries, no matter where, need to prepare their uh, grids for this. This is why a lot of countries now decide that they need to extend their grids and that they also need to replace uh, aging grids. So in according to the International Energy Agency, the grid length, the global grid length will double by 2050 and half of the currently existing grid needs to be replaced until then. You mentioned it shortly. I think it's interesting to dive in. Are there regional differences in how grid investments and transformer demand are evolving? At the moment, we uh, definitely see uh, an insane boom in all these topics, you know. So everybody is now accelerating the energy transition technologies. Also, the grid investments are booming, but not everywhere. Of course, we have regional differences. This boom is mainly caused by the... Yeah, insane demand coming from the US and European countries and also from China. Because what happened there in the past two years in the US, it seems like now the politics have noticed there suddenly like, okay, maybe my grid now is a bit too old for uh, also doing all this energy transition stuff. So now I definitely need to do uh, something in, in uh, kind of replacement. So this is what happened in the US and what caused a lot of uh, demand flood uh, in, in the whole entire world. And what China did in the past few years, this is also such an insane movement, 
because in in the past china was yeah, more like focused on building up like coal generation power or gas generation but in the past few years they did insane investments in pv parks they yeah build, build it up um giga pv parks in the desert and also a lot of offshore and onshore wind parks which caused also a lot of grid investment in china and also in europe so this is what We all see now also in the transformer industry that now so many transformers are needed. This is all caused by mainly these three countries. But of course, we all should not forget that there are also the emerging markets and economies like Africa. They are even not fully 100% electrified. They also need to extend their grids. So this is definitely a growing center, especially. We we definitely need to mention there that there is still struggle um, with financial issues. India, for example, is definitely also a country which is, yeah, in our opinion, a growing a growing center. How does this acceleration in the grid development affect the supply chain of the industry? Yeah, it affects the whole supply chain. So uh, what happened in, in the transformer industry, especially for the transformer producers, is mainly in these countries I, I mentioned before, in the US and also in Europe, the transformer producers ran full and even did not have the chance to meet the whole booming demand. So they had full order books then for two or three years in a row. So this was quite insane. And then transformer lead times went up by from uh, let's say 50 weeks to 120 weeks so this was also such a huge acceleration regarding the the lead times and then what is happening and what we experience now is like grid operators then need to switch to other producers maybe to producers they never placed an order before then we now have a switch um, in usual relationships between a grid operator and a transformer producers because now grid operators also look to new producers and also uh, swipe their focus to other countries. For example, uh, US grid operators now place a lot of orders in Latin America, Europe a lot of orders in Turkey, and then also these countries ran also full and now a lot of uh, orders also land at Chinese OEMs or transformer producers. So we can say that this boom is now also affecting the entire world. So one market can uh, can have an effect on the global situation. Huh? Yeah, definitely. Very, very interesting. Um, how does the shortage of skilled labor, material supply chains from the raw material play a role in this entire scenario? Yeah, a huge role. This is also what we saw in the past few years where the transformer industry experienced a really notable material shortage uh, regarding the transformer steel. This is the GOES called grain-oriented steel. Mm -hmm. It was really short for a few years and then transformer prices jumped up to around 70-80%. But of course, the greatest bottleneck still is the uh, shortage of uh, skilled workers. This is definitely a real critical point, a big challenge for the whole industry, I guess. But I think what is also a point uh, which I want to mention here is the limited manufacturing capacities. This is not a challenge also for the transformer producers, but also for the whole component producers. This is also what we ourselves experience here, because the whole supply chains now seem not to be ready for this jumping digital double growth rates boom we had in the past few years. How is the industry, this, how they are addressing these challenges to find solutions? I think they are all trying to catch the wave. I think they're all trying to make the best out of the situation. What we see now, what we can also read in, in all these public sources, we read a lot of things we see regarding the transformer producers now try to extend their output. They do efficiency programs. They try to invest in new halls and build up the output to be ready for these, this growing demand. And this is what also component manufacturers um, are doing. So this is definitely a sign in our industry that everybody is really trying to catch the wave and also believe in an ongoing demand. 
What do you see as the biggest risk facing the transformer market and the broader energy transition? Risk is often definitely a point we should think of because, you know, we talked about so many positive things in, in the minutes before. But of course, there are risks because at the moment, it seems like this kind of energy transition topic is popular in politics. So at the moment, they seem like, okay, I will take my money and take it for the energy transition. But when other and maybe severe topics jump up in a country like natural disasters or COVID or something like this, of course, then it could happen that politics decide to move away their incentives and put the money into other areas. So this is definitely a risk. And uh, the second risk I also want to mention is like the transformer industry is also in competition with other grid technologies like cables. So this is definitely also a risk that maybe all this money, is, which is now going into the transformer investment, is taken for cables. And what I also want to mention is like I had in 2008 also a good market situation in the transformer industry, but then overinvestment and market saturation happened and then the bubble bursted and the industry crashed and remained in bad shape for a few years, I think for 10 years. And this is definitely something we all need to keep in mind because it's often always um, a fear of overinvestment and market saturation when we have such a booming phase, especially when manufacturers decide to expand the uh, production uh, halls. Looking ahead, well, not everybody knows uh, an answer to it. I, I know that. But I think it's always interesting to look ahead. What does the future hold for the transformer market, for our industry sector, for for the demanding grid investments especially? Yeah, this is the question everybody asks me every day. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we don't think that this double-digit growth rate will hold on for 20 years. This is definitely insane. This is We all notice at the moment that the industry is not ready for such a jumping growth. But we definitely think that uh, transformers and also all the other grid components are a key technologies for the energy transition. So we definitely think demand will stay at a high level. Of course, it will not grow at double-digit growth rates, but we still also need to prepare ourselves for a holding and really growing demand. We all know that a lot of things are still to do. Grid assets get older, they need to be replaced. All these countries which are not 100% electrified need to uh, extend the grids. And also all this uh, stress regarding the renewables needs to be balanced and needs grid investment also in the next few years. So, yes, we definitely think this uh, demand will hold on. So we look positive into the future by taking the risks into in, in, into account. Uh. Yeah, this is good. Good summary. <laughs> <laughs> what, what opportunities regarding innovation or new business models do you see for the transformer industry? aim the challenges of the energy transition? We definitely should think again on uh, the, the, the old grid assets, which are really aging. I think then especially service and uh, monitoring, grid monitoring will definitely uh, be a focus topic for the next years and also a chance for new business models. Also the whole digitalization thing, the digitalization of the transmission as well, the, the distribution grid. This is definitely a chance for us and in general for uh, business models. Also AI, um, this is definitely important. What I also see is when uh, new grid applications are coming up, they're also causing uh, new challenges for uh, grid assets. Also these assets and transformers and so on need to be for ready for these special applications in a technical view. And also uh, the whole sustainability topic. This is definitely also something which comes in mind in our industry. So uh, in the Transformers Magazine conference last year in May, I guess it was three hours uh, topic block just around uh, transformer sustainability, uh, carbon neutral production, carbon neutral um, material, carbon neutral steel and so on. So this is definitely also uh, a chance for new business models and also something we need to keep in mind. 
special applications you mentioned shortly. What Can you give any concrete examples about the special applications? I think we definitely should be ready for green uh, hydrogen as well for data centers, which are jumping out of the ground uh, in the past few years. And also, of course, offshore wind technologies. Yeah, this is definitely something. Uh, very interesting. To you, from your personal perspective, is there anything we should have on the radar or keep in mind when we look ahead? Yeah, I think it's definitely uh, important to see that all the other industry participations in our surroundings seem to believe in in a holding a demand as they all uh, decide to extend the output and the, also their manufacturing capacities. We definitely should all do our best to catch the wave. So when I summarize everything, we look into a very beautiful future with a lot of opportunities. Of course, there's always a risk on one side, but yeah. possible to balance that out. A lot of challenges with new applications which are coming. AI plays a role, digital twin, digitalization. Very interesting. Christina, I have to say thank you very much for all the insights we gained from you. And I learned also personally was a very interesting chat we had. I hope you also had fun watching or listening to us. I have to say thank you and goodbye.